Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. This story is about a guy who feels gutted after his wayward spouse did it again. But let's see how it plays out. My D-Day was almost three years ago. At that time, I had been married for almost three years when I found out my wife had been cheating on me routinely. In the months prior to finding out, my spidey sense had been growing increasingly suspicious that something was up. Like many of you here, I made the mistake of trusting my partner so readily, so instinctively as I assumed we were rock solid. Sure, our marriage had its issues, but they were challenges that we had handled together and in many ways bonded us uniquely. We were in our mid-twenties when we met in a fast-paced East Coast city. We were both aspirational, optimistic, and truly loved each other. We just clicked from day one. The kind of thing you think will never happen until it does. We spent as much time together as possible. It was crazy in the best way. But after just a couple of months, things got a little turbulent. We had a child together, unplanned, and this was at a young-ish age, at least by East Coast urban standards. So our relationship from then on was generally defined by stress, but also by having each other's back. We went through a lot together in terms of navigating our families. Both lean conservative, so the unplanned kid were the challenge in various ways. For example, we had some real trauma of bonding. The feeling that at the end of the day, we come back to each other. While our trauma bonding was strong, our normal relationship bonding wasn't the best. How could we have the time? Both starting our careers while juggling child having, rearing, it was nearly impossible. I started a master's program in retrospect, probably in a fit of anxiety about the other stuff going on in my life. Once that started, I officially had almost no free time. We were just completely stacked. The thing is the day-to-day -day of our newfound stressful life was actually pretty okay for me. I had had a fun college and early 20s post-college experience, so I was pretty ready to settle down. I didn't need any more happy hours than I had to go to for professional purposes. I was pretty stoked on the dad lifestyle, truth be told, but my spouse was in the opposite camp. Her entire life had been heavily regimented due to controlling parents. Minimal social life, even through her mid-twenties, constantly under their thumb. So once we were married and I realized the dynamic at play, I made it a point to ensure that she could go out on a Saturday night with her girlfriends or whatever. Her friends, I'd met and generally liked. So I'd stay in and take care of the baby, maybe write a paper or something. Sometimes I'd even have to cover for her with her parents. Who, of course, lived around the corner, who might ask me why she wasn't answering her phone. I'd say she was already sleeping. Mind you, I had no FOMA whatsoever as I felt like I'd been there. Done that. While for her, she still had that social itch to scratch, so I encouraged her to absolutely go out and have a good time. As a working mother with a stressful job, I wanted her to go out and blow off scene. The cheating essentially took two forms. Physical cheating and one night stand with complete randos as she met at bars, went out on those Saturday nights with the girls and emotional affairs with people she knew, usually co-workers. These were happening simultaneously. From what I know, there were for sure multiple four plus one night stands and at least two plus in the emotional affair co-worker category, sexting, basically. I don't think the latter ever turned into the former, but it is hard to say. Honestly, when you're talking about multiples of five or more, it starts to lose meaning. I was so, so rocked on D-Day. It was a thing where I was about to go to bed and saw her phone go off. I'd had the creeping suspicion, so I caved and checked. Boy, was I in for surprise at the scale of what I found? Christ. I was then in the final semester of my master's working on a research-intensive thesis, hardest few months of my life getting that done after finding out. We went to marriage counseling pretty quickly after and I actually felt her remorse was genuine. She ended up getting diagnosed with some psychological conditions stemming from her tough upbringing, which were framed as the big reason why the cheating happened. Among many other behavioral effects, 
I was willing to analyze the situation very holistically, and it truly did make sense. So I swallowed my pride and decided to work to stay together for our child above all else. In the short term, things got better. Sex life improved. I finished school, so I had more time it felt like we could be more open with each other. After a few months, we decided on a fresh start across the country to a state we'd both wanted to live for a long time. Away from her parents, away from her past life. Things felt new and hopeful. First one plus year went pretty well in the new state but just before the beginning of the pandemic, I had a bad feeling again. She'd been hanging out with some friends of friends who didn't give off the best vibe. For example, they liked going to strip clubs and were pretty into drugs, albeit in a state where pot is legal. They were into other non-legal stuff too. It's not judgmental, but I just got a bad, untrustworthy vibe from them. I started to notice that she became more guarded again with her phone just like two years before. Spidey senses tingling big time, but I lived in denial for a bit. I didn't want to say it was so, even though I knew something was up. Then one night, we were playing an online drinking game. This is like early April, mind you, so the Zoom boom heyday. And literally sitting right next to me, I saw her sending hearts and such to someone via text. Some of the unsavory characters mentioned in the last graph were present. It was so out in the open. It turned out to be a rondo friend of a friend who was on the video call on the other end. She said she sent him hearts because she wanted drugs from him. That's all. Nothing to worry about. It wasn't serious, etc., etc. Talk about the red flag. So she said that she'd lay low on the drugs, and she did it for a while. But in the last couple of months, I noticed a slow uptick again. Starting to talk more with that crew again. It seemed to go hand in hand with the phone guarding, but I didn't initially think as much of it as I might have previously for a couple of reasons. For example, she would openly offer to ask if I need to use her phone in random circumstances, such as to follow directions on the car. She didn't use to do that. That made me think that maybe I'm overthinking again, and she's just texting a random normal friend. She is pretty addicted to the phone in general, so wouldn't be a shock. But this came to a head the other night in a weird way. We have an alarm system that is controlled from our phones, and my phone died while it should have been charging overnight. Guess it wasn't fully plugged in. I had to go downstairs immediately as the dog had to go out, so I had to use her phone to turn off the alarm. I'll be honest. I braced myself before I opened the phone. I was nervous of what I might see. Well, I got a glimpse of the messages screen, not even clicking on an individual conversation, but seeing it among the active apps. And I saw at least two convos that were not good. One was a person whose name I recognized from a few years prior, Didia Era, a known prior sexting partner with whom there is no other known relationship. I could only see their latest message, and it said something to the effect of wow. Also known as something you'd probably send in a response to a pic in my opinion, or certainly something suggestive. And I saw a random name, definitely not a known friend, with a what you up to message, sent the night before, a Saturday where she was out with some friends. And this was just in the top four or five combos, so who knows what lies beneath. I couldn't bear to actually click on the app and see what else I might see. I was re-gutted I've been gutted multiple times now to the point that it's hard to feel much, but dang. I felt it again, that gut punch feeling many of y'all know it like no one else in my life. So here I am sharing it with y'all. Really struggling with what to do next. I've been in individual counseling previously, so thinking I can at least start that up again, and from there, think about my next steps. But damn, if I don't feel like this is the beginning of the end of our relationship, I spent the past two days trying to act normal while plotting my escape, something I'd never done before, but I think it has to happen. I have to preserve myself. I apologize for the dire outlook as I do believe rehabilitation and rebuilding are totally possible in the right context. People do make mistakes. Or make decisions that aren't totally rational. I even experienced a brief rehabilitation and even more improvement in my own relationship in the short term. So if you're someone working toward change post D-Day, 
I want you to maintain that positive change in happiness is possible. I have no doubt about that. But at the same time, you have to trust your gut. If it feels off in a bad way, then it might be time to jet. It hurts. But it is good to realize that at the end of the day, you can't change other people. They have to change themselves. And if they don't, then at some point, your best option is to change yourself. I think I'm nearly there. All right. Now it's time for a quick update before we get to some comments. Over the weekend, I decided to investigate further. Since the more I thought about it, the more I realized that while the text message convo previews I saw gave me a bad feeling, they also didn't give me definitive proof of anything. As a reminder, I had to borrow the wayward spouse's phone to turn our alarm off last week. And on the messages at main screen, I saw one what you up to sent on a Saturday night from an unknown to me name and another along the line of, wow, from a name I recognized from the D-Day 1 period. A former co-worker. Well, late night, I took a deeper dive, and it was eerily similar to D-Day 1. Emailed hotel reservation info for a work trip to a known former affair partner. Just prior to COVID, attempts to coordinate similar meetups with other known former of hair partners around the same time. Funny thing is they actually seem like they tried to turn wayward spouse down. Straight up pornographic snaps sent as recently as December 2020. A deleted snap conversation with a different known former affair partner. Another former co-worker. Where all I could see was wayward spouse had sent hi a few days ago. The what you up to text combo was deleted. Snap seemed like it's regularly deleted as there were only two active combo threads, both with the conversations erased, except for one word greetings. But I saw numerous X-rated snaps under saved snaps or whatever. Can't tell who they were sent to, but it sure as hell wasn't me. I feel bad bringing you all bad news, and I assure you this wasn't pain shopping, but I had to be a 100% certain before making more definitive moves to break away. This locked it for me. There is no ambiguity around what I found. I can't keep rationalizing this, trying to ignore it, or thinking of how I, we can solve the problem. I tried. I'm done being the stable one. The rock while my wayward spouse continues to blatantly lie day in and day out. I regret not getting out immediately post D-Day 1, but my second best option is getting out now. We'll keep you posted with more positive developments when I can. In solidarity with anyone else out there reading who finds themselves in a similar position. Okay. Time for those glorious comments. First up from Disastrous Draft 4717. Wow. I am heartbroken for you and your kiddos. First, I would lower your up and find out your options. Unfortunately, I would also test the kiddos for fraternity, as well as yourself for STDs. She has been cheating on you almost your entire marriage. It is tragic that she is a conniving sneaky lowlife, but you will not know a 100% until you test. I have no problem with legal drugs, but Jesus man, your wife has children. Cops come to your place. OP, we found wayward spouse dead in a hotel room from an OD. Talk about screw the kids up. She is screwing strange men and doing drugs. Do you want these people around your kids? No freaking way. Your relationship aside, drug dealers don't play. Her behavior is effed up and putting your family in real danger. The last thing your family needs is a bunch of cokeheads busting up your place. They don't care if they scar your kids and neither does wayward spouse. Dude, you are working on your degree, working and watching the kiddos all while she is being a big cheater. Is almost like she is a psychopath. Who does that to someone you love? You deserve better. It is time to stop the madness and get off the crazy train. Good luck and God bless. Our next comment comes from we, I'm Sean. Sounds like she has a few addictions rolling here. People would choose this sort of lifestyle, sell them make good decisions, and don't do well over the long run. Make sure to check your finances and start separating them. Get a lawyer and get test of rest CDs and get ready to file.
Make sure the lawyer knows that she is using hard drugs depending on your state that may come into play in terms of custody or supervised visits. Also, be prepared to share this information with her family so that they know exactly why you're divorcing. Because she sure as hell isn't going to tell them the truth. One final thing. Get a voice-activated recorder and start carrying it with you. Don't be surprised if she tries to manufacture an incident of abuse. It happens, especially once she realizes she can charm, trick, or sex you out of divorce. Protect yourself, my brother. No one else will. Good luck. And we're gonna round things out from the OP. Yep. I feel sad that a paternity test is the right move, but it very clearly is. I can't continue to deceive myself. If she cheat on me this way while we were married, then I'd be crazy to think she wasn't doing similar stuff while we were dating when pregnancy occurred. On the illegal drugs, I think it was legitimately a short stint. But that's mostly due to miraculous timing. She was getting more and more sketchy, hanging with that crowd just as lockdown began in March-April of 2020. When people actually took it seriously. I think that snapped her out of that phase, but it's honestly hard to know. Now I wonder when she's acting manic, if she's acting on Molly, who knows? And I agree about the dangers. She seemed to think it wasn't a big deal because the drug hookup was a friend of a friend who that whole friend group seemed to like. Surprise, surprise. People who drew drugs, like the person with the drugs. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. That was what made D-Day 1 so hard. We were new parents, both working a lot, and me also doing a master's at night. I had my nose down, busting my butt, and had little free time. In retrospect, that was just another thing for the wayward spouse to exploit. She knew I'd stay home with the baby because my priorities were so different from hers. Are you all my personal?